Okay, so we got everybody in the picture. Yep, cool beans. Okay. All right, good afternoon, folks. This is Bell Geode, and I am here at Flight SimCon with Mr. Stephen Hood from Dovetail Games, maker of Flight Sim World. So, first off, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with me. Really do appreciate it. <laughs> I know one of the, the big things that uh, we've been asking about is like communication and so on and so forth. So I really appreciate the, the time, the opportunity to you know, share some of the stuff with the general public. So my good friend Sergio from Heli Summer actually submitted a few questions. None of them are helicopter related. I don't believe you. <laughs> that must have been edited, I'm sure. Believe it or not, yes, he actually submitted some pretty interesting questions. So I'm just going to read them off my phone here, and we'll take up one as a show. So the first question that he had was what is the biggest challenge the team had to face to bring FSX to the current state of FSW? I guess it means like the transition. God, the biggest challenge, I mean, trying to pick one individual thing, I'd actually rather group it and say, how do you take technology that is more than 10 years old, that's been built around uh, machines that existed in that time, and had no real understanding of what was going to come next? We had to take that legacy technology and then rework the underpinnings in order to deliver a platform that would enable us to deliver on our vision for flight sim. Right. And so we did a bunch of work in the background that nobody really cares about other than the headline things like oh making it 64 bit yeah, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't a five minute job you know trying to integrate new rendering techniques so that the planes look so cool right. and we've got new lighting solutions and all sorts and there are pros and cons that went with that so I think the real challenge actually was doing all that work internally and the business looking at it and thinking okay we've been investing in this for two years yeah. um, where's all the shiny new stuff and all the airlines and whatnot right. But actually, we've taken the approach of trying to do things in what we consider to be the right way, so that we can deliver on more things that people notice, like the rain beads that came up in an earlier conversation. Yeah. <laughs> people see what's in front of them. They don't care about the technology under the hood. Just give me the new thing. Right. And now we've got that platform, we're going to start delivering on those things thicker faster. Excellent, excellent. That's the kind of stuff that I like to hear. I like the fact that, okay, we started with this code that is so ancient. We're going to get you up to modern day, and then we'll move on from there. That is something People I really talk about you know, the, the legacy code. Why did we start with that? Why didn't you just make a completely new simulator right. from day one? People love that concept as if we're all just ready to start programming the new thing. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> the team um, that were newly assembled for Flight Sim World and indeed Flight School before it, none of them were uh, entirely ex as experienced as all the ACES team put together. Mm -hmm. right? So there were some um, uh, experiences and skills that we did have in the team that they didn't have and we right. tried to leverage those. But at the same time, FSX is built on some fantastic tech and fantastic systems that still apply today. Right. So we bought into that and we decided to apply our expertise to upgrading it and preparing it for our ideas in the future mm -hmm. and at the same time you could deliver a credible flight simulator for early access exactly. and that's where we are that's what we've got that's one of the things that i've been telling a lot of my viewers in particular is if you're building a house you don't start with the roof you start with the foundation and that's exactly what dovetail's been doing i really appreciate that all right so moving on to question number two was the decision to end flight school something that you had planned already, or were you using it as a test platform for FSW? Um, I wouldn't say that we necessarily planned all along to end it when Flight Simulator World launched. I think our view was that uh, flight school was an initial technology investigation where we got some of the components up and running. We could push it out to the community, push it out to Steam, see who interacted with it, who was downloading it, and what they were doing, and take that knowledge into Flight Simulator World. And because all of the stuff that existed in flight uh, school, is inherent in flights in world. It makes no sense for us to try and split our resource and maintain right, two of them. Right, maintain two of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what we did was, and I think there was a, a good community reaction to this, was anybody that had flight school got flights in world. So it's not as if we just tried to terminate one thing and move everybody across the new project yeah. and make them yeah. buy this one. Is if you'd invested with us and came up with us on day one, you're with us in flights in world. And now Flight Sim World is everything that Flight School was, plus more, so there's no need for that. Everybody's now migrated to Flight Sim World. And that's a very important point, too, that I want to reiterate, because just in the brief time this weekend that I've run into people, 
There are still people out there that did purchase flight school but don't even know that they are already eligible for flight school. So I just want to get that point out there, folks. If you did get Dovetail Games flight school, you can now download Flights in World and you can participate in the early access. All right, so moving on to question number three of six. Uh, what is the biggest challenge you have ahead right now? Um, I think it's picking our next headline feature. So there's a bunch of things that we're going to do as part of our roadmap. Mm -hmm. Many of the things that we haven't made public yet because uh, the team are working on different things. Like different things are cooking for right. the team. Right. So we don't all rush around like a, a herd of sheep onto the next feature. Lots of things are concurrently in development. Okay. And some things tend to naturally fall out faster than others. Or you notice that moment of magic and you go, that is so cool. Let's put more effort into right. bringing this one ahead uh, earlier. So I think the biggest challenge for us now is actually trying to concentrate on one of those big hits of features because we're going to have updates that roll out to improve the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Adding a greater functionality, yes. and all the things that we need to do. That's part and parcel of that life that, uh, that uh, is reinvigorated every week, like mm -hmm. a weekly update to the scene. But at the same time, what's the big thing? That's right, what's the big thing? I think, I think the big thing that's probably coming up at the moment to, to give you a bit of an exclusive is probably the change in the other region. Really? So we, we've been modifying a bunch of things uh, from FSX to uh, flight school and then onto flights in world with the lights because, scattering you know, and the lights in general. And people like the weather and the weather things. And that's great. But I look at it and I think, so, yeah, but that's get just slightly flight better flight than the yeah. same. Right. <laughs> I have noticed it is. Sea change. Yeah. So we did that to kind of wrap it up and okay. contain it so, uh, with the view that maybe we need to rely on that if the new solution was um, computationally expensive and people weren't able to run it on lower end hardware. But it actually turns out the performance is fine as far. And it may get completely replaced. And that's the big thing that we've been looking at right now. So if, if that works out and continues as expected, that will be big headlines. <laughs> but we'll also look at other things like cold dark stuff and all that. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, and we're trying to bring a bit of imagination to those things as well. I can really care about the feelings that the aircraft is alive and real. It's a real machine that you're trying to operate. And what do you do in a real world? You go through a checklist. You right. care about the checklist. Start, start, you know, always use a checklist. <laughs> I've only started you know, learning to fly late last year. I still go through my checklist. And when I think I've got it nailed and I skip a couple of things, that's when you go, that's where things happen. I forgot to take a control lock out or something like that. Like checklist. Matter. So the whole concept of starting the aircraft and caring about it is what we're working on. And speaking of uh, the weather, uh, one of the things that at least I've been pushing for is the whole real weather engine. Because, you know, in other simulators, of course, that is a major thing. And especially whenever I do uh, situational type of videos. I kind of like having the real weather because that just throws that uncertainty in there. So is that something that's going to be coming uh, along with the whole weather engine change? Uh, I, I don't think so because what I'm not going to do is delay the integration of the weather engine into okay. ready just to add the live weather component. What I'll do is, especially as it's early hours, I'll push the weather out when it's good to go as soon as possible and not hold it back. Right, right. So people start enjoying that and feeding back on it. Then we'll add the other components. And there will be plenty that we do need to add. Okay. But my vision for the real world weather is actually I can, uh, without trying to give anything away, imagine that there is a mode or scenario where it's permanently on and everybody has to enjoy and utilize real weather and plan around it. Yeah, especially so, like in a multiplayer scenario. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's going to have a place and it's going to come to the fore. It might not be there and paired with the weather engine when that comes available. It okay. depends on how quickly they come together. That works for me. All right, so let me see. Uh, what would you say is your biggest achievement thus far in MSW? The one thing that you absolutely want everyone to know that you want. So this I have to get my steam. Just pick one. Just one. Uh, I think the biggest achievement is really the delivery. Uh, flights in one to early access. I mean, that's, I agree with that. Yeah. I started on it a couple of years ago, and there was me, and a couple of days later, Elite Program. There's just two. 
two of us in a room going, well, we're going to make a flight one way. When will it be correct? Uh, where do we start? What do we do? <laughs> so the whole thing has been rapidly put together. We've you know, brought the brightest minds in there because of the and we're still growing the team. Mm -hmm. So what we've done from zero to two years later with the access, I'm going to be proud of. And right. I think that should be an indication to the community that we're not finished okay. with this yet. Yeah. If we can do this in 24 months, no, I was looking online. and then we can do it in other. Yes, that makes a lot of sense, and I'll support you on that one. Okay, and uh, in how many phases are you planning to release this stuff from the VA right now, and then airliners and then helicopters, for example? I guess I did mention helicopters. What's the general roadmap? Which honestly, I don't even expect. Anyway. Um, I'm guessing he means adding uh, different aircraft. Okay, so um, the roadmap for adding aircraft, I think there's a natural progression that you want to experience as a student pilot who did you know the aircraft yeah, and then we, enters the world I mean, I got, and there's a natural progression, got, progression up to so, you know, commercial pilots, um, right. uh, larger yeah, twins, multi-engine props, yeah, turbines, I think all sorts of things, and then into jet so and airlines. So yeah. yeah. uh, so that's how I see like, it uh, progressing. Me, and then but that, there's so flexibility so in the sense that it very much depends on what third parties are coming in. Some third parties are just testing the water if you want to push some stuff in occasionally, that's fine. You might find that other reasons certainly want to dive in. They want to put the effort in the world without developing the right because it's a two-way process at the moment. We're trying to educate them on what they need to do in order to maximise the new technology and infrastructure when they're content. So if somebody turns up and says, look, I'm going to throw my team into it. If you want it, I'm not going to hold it back. So it's part of the dovetail trying to lead this road map on. This is how we expand this, we expect the features to progress, mm -hmm. but it's up to third parties now quickly and they can get to the tech. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, so my last question for you. I don't even know if this is really a question, but the community has a lot of mixed feelings right now, and several members are skeptical. He hasn't bracketed so aggressively so, or just played mad. <laughs> what would you like to say to these people? I'm guessing to reassure them that you are, in fact, on the right track. But that's, that's kind of a broad question, isn't it? It is. Lots of, lots of keyboard warriors out there who you know, have opinions on things, and that's fine. We've all got opinions on the internet. Um, and I think uh, hopefully people can at least appreciate the fact that uh, the dovetail are being quite professional about the whole thing. And the reason that we don't respond to everything, or if a third party says something and post things in a public forum, some of the things are really true and some things are really wrong, we don't jump in there and try to correct everybody else. Right. And we don't try to force correct on every conversation because it really doesn't matter a great deal what we say because it's words. Mm -hmm. Some of us can just yeah. talk and talk and talk and not just go on and on and on. Right. What matters is the product. the product and the progress that we've delivered. You know, we've been building up these past two years and there was the brief example of what we're up to flight school. But really all people have had to go on is the occasional interviews, some of the things that we post up somewhere, yeah, exactly. screenshots. Now we've got the product in early access. Judge it on the progress of early access. Okay. So you will see change. I don't mind if you're really, really against what they're doing do, for whatever reason may be. They may There's always going to be haters. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I mean, but they may have read something somewhere on the front before mm. that's completely wrong. It's, it's, it's and then assumed that and they spread that knowledge. And right. So, you know, dovetail and they work with third parties or they're going to own all your content and give you 3% of their profits. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they got that one from. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. and all of that stuff is just noise. And people um, in the company can, you know, become annoyed about it because you know it's incorrect. Mm -hmm. yes. I keep saying to them, it doesn't matter. That's just the noise. Let's just keep <laughs> doing what we're doing. Right. And when we get to tomorrow, people will appreciate that we were coming to this say hi. Right I saw your uh, Twitch stream because we are changing things the way that we yeah, sell. Yeah, that's why I was one of the winners. Uh, FSW, oh, the platform is staying. What we're going to do with the old add-ons, so, the new technology, yeah. the ways of, uh, of doing my, the, my son downloaded some of those things are modifying ever so slightly, but the modifying of the and that we want to expand flight simulation um, on the <coughs> platform for the future and trust us we'll get there yes. I understand that it's early release right. and, and, a lot and of yeah I understand that honestly that I think one thing that yeah. uh, just as a suggestion well, like that might go uh, far it would be if you yourself actually uh, have like maybe a monthly vlog or something just an informal like impromptu thing you don't have to give any dates or any of that kind of stuff just kind of a 
Um, I don't know. that. I guess uh, just the news blur or something like that. Just something to say, hey, guys, checking in. I thought about that. I mean, Dovetail as a whole can probably um, get together and organize that. <coughs> if it's me personally, then 99% of my waking hours are just focused on I want to what we do with the SW. Right, right. Where the Queen's Sun is coming from and how we like to solve. And I love that. That's what keeps me going. The fact that it fits in the whole scheme. The idea that I've had is uh, instead of us trying to organize the things, maybe I'll just do a guest the, panel or yeah. all the things that light up guest panel and things every week. Really so, so uh, you know, we can be thrown to the lions and, that and you going. can ask us those questions <laughs> and wag your finger <laughs> however you need to. <laughs> and I am there to answer those things for you, which okay. will be most useful because there's a lot of assumptions that are made, and then we can't wait for flights in Con once a year to meet up and dispel the rumors, can we? So maybe we do that more frequently. That would be a great idea. But listen, hey. That's all the questions that I had, so I want to thank you so much thank you. for taking the time to speak uh, with me and uh, one time so much for the sim. Yes. You know, the first thing I did was put the Tomcat in there. It had to be done. It was you that did the Tomcat. It had to be done. <laughs> but yes, I'm really, really looking forward to the progress that you're making the ability and to go all the add-ons and so on that are going to be coming uh, in, in the we'll, future. We'll, sure. we'll, we'll, we'll get to helicopters as soon as we can. Sounds good to me. Sergio, you heard it here first. <laughs> Alrighty folks, my name is Andrew Gordon. I'm signing off. I'll some comments online. Be back with some more Flight Sim Con. Ciao. Real quick.